Hey guys, welcome back. This video will go under the playlist of Piratch. The main learnings from this video are from the Piratch director, I will talk about the performance and then I will talk about whether L1 can report more preamble IDs to L2 or not. If it is possible, then what are the pros and cons? Then I will talk about how Mac Cache Reader can influence the design of this threshold value. Okay. Mainly at the GNOME, the Piratch detector will be running for every preamble ID. Okay. For all the 64 preamble ID, uh, the correlation would be done and uh, there will be a check on whether a definite peak is formed or not. So if a peak is formed and if it is above a certain threshold value, then the preamble ID would be detected and correspondingly the timing advance and preamble ID would be reported. Okay, this would be reported to L2. Now, apart from these things, what other parameters would be reported to L2? Okay, it depends on the Mac scheduler algorithm. Okay, uh, so usually the scheduler would be requesting for SNR as well to be reported. So SNR is one thing. And apart from that, uh, it could be even signal power or it could be even noise power and many other uh, you know measurements uh, could be requested. Okay, it all depends on the design of the Mac scheduler. So all these things will be reported only when there is a peak which is above the threshold setting, right? So that threshold design mainly depends on certain considerations. So the first thing is this threshold value should be as low as possible so that you know the more valid preamble IDs are detected, and at the same time uh, the threshold value will not uh, should not detect any false false preamble IDs. Okay. So based on that, uh, I have considered one uh, example plot here. Uh, so let us say after performing the correlation at the GNOME in the peak search algorithm, there is a definite peak. Okay. Based on this peak, one can set threshold uh, value one. So that looks fine. But if you want to lower the threshold, uh, then we are seeing that a false uh, peak is detected over here. So this is not a, a good thing to lower. But to support this, I was mentioning in the previous video that one can go for more number of reputations by choosing a different PNH format. So when more number of reputations are there, the averaging would be done in the uh, PNH detector so that uh, you know the noise variations are reduced to a greater extent and uh, one can reduce the threshold to a lower value, let us say threshold number two, uh, so that uh, this would help uh, in uh, accommodate more and more reviews. Okay, so so that's what uh, I, I am mentioning over here that okay, based on the number of reputations, the threshold value can be set as low as possible and uh, Based on that, more number of UVs can be detected in the same slot. Okay, and also there is one more one more thing that you know, depending upon the different formats, the design of this threshold will vary because different formats are having different repetitions. So that we can get it from PH repetition index table. If you see A1 format has got two repetitions and A2 has got four repetitions, like the different formats have got different repetitions. More the more the repetitions, uh, we can try to set the threshold as low as possible. Okay, so the thing is that. I was mentioning that more UVs can be detected uh, in, a, in a slot and that can be sent to L2. So what is the maximum possible uh, uh, detection? So 64, right? 64 is the maximum preamble that can be detected. But anything I would say, even 32 is also a good number, okay? Good amount of uh, UVs that are detected. So when such a huge numbers are detected and uh, reported to L2, what will happen? So one good thing is, yeah, we are, we are going to address more and more UVs. But what is the problem? The problem is, it will make the scheduler design very complex. So it will burden the uh, scheduler because now scheduler has to address all these UVs. It has to, you know, allocate the resources uh, for further uh, um, processing, right? And uh, considering the PDSCS data or PVSCS data, uh, even, uh, you know, the uh, further uh, message to message three should be scheduled for all these UVs. So it will burden the scheduler. And moreover, it will also increase the um, signal processing at the L2 layer. So considering all these things, an optimal scheduler is required, okay, which can address an optimal number of UVs. So what would be that number? It depends on how the scheduler is designed and what kind of platform you're using and things like that. How much signal processing you can, uh, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, uh, bear. So considering into those aspects, let us say 16 is the good amount. Okay, even some scheduler can go up to 32 or more than that as well, but let's say 16 is a good amount. Now, considering this into picture, now I will go to the plot, example plot. Let us say, you know, um, th for this plot, let us say earlier the threshold is set at, uh, let's say, threshold 2, which could be accommodating 32 UVs. But now we know that at the Mac, uh, you know, Mac scheduler will only consider uh, 16, we will only consider the 16 UVs that can be addressed. So then we need to have, have threshold 2. We can relax this threshold and we can set uh, this threshold to a little bit higher value, let's say threshold number 1, which can which can ensure that uh, the detection of 20 UVs are possible without having any false detection. Okay, so I mean, one more thing is that um, one more thing is that uh, since the threshold is now set to a little bit higher value, even you can have less number of repetitions in the system so that uh, you know more variations or more variations in the noise are also allowed, and that variation should be less than the threshold one. Okay, so I think you got a clarity like how Mac scheduler can influence the design of this uh, scheduler. So, with that, what I would say is there will be a trade off in the system while designing this threshold value. So, first thing is that depending upon the Mac scheduler design, uh, you know. It will consider, let us say, 16. If it considers 16, then based on that, you can have a relaxed threshold. Uh, it need not have, I mean, it need not have to be as low as possible. It can be an optimal value. Okay, but uh, in such case, even you can go for a less number of repetitions. You can choose different formats as well. That flexibility will be uh, given. But uh, yeah, there will be compromise on certain number of UVs that are not addressed uh, in the first attempt. Okay, that kind of uh, trade-off would be there. And also, 
we I mean, we will not be in a position. I mean, the genome we will not be in a position to detect more and more UVs. Okay, because the, even if it detects, okay, there is one more point. Even if let us say uh, L1 detects, okay, 20 UVs or 24 UVs, and if it is reported to uh, you know the L2 layer, what does L2 do? As I was telling, L2 layer would ask for many parameters, right? And one thing that it is asking is SNR. So SNR for all these UVs would be reported. So, but L2 knows that it can address only 16 UVs at max. But even though 20 are reported to L2. Now L2 will, will choose the best 16 and that will be chosen based on the best uh, UVs that, that are having best SNR. Okay, the first 16 good, uh, uh, first 16 UVs that are having very good SNR will be chosen for uh, further uh, processing. Okay, so even with that, what is the other problem? Like uh, there, are, there could be some UVs which are in the cell edge, uh, so we we have to compromise on uh, uh, those UVs. And uh, definitely these UVs will not be addressed in the first attempt. These cell edge UVs have to go for second or third attempt by increasing its power, so that it, it will be eventually addressed in the uh, second or third attempt and things like that. So such kind of trade-off would be there in the system. So considering all this trade-off and what the customer uh, would be looking based on that, a careful design of all these things should be done. Okay, I hope you got the clarity. With this, I will wind up the video. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye bye.